Hey guys, how's it going? Today I thought I'd share a little bit about how I get my kids to sleep. Okay, so I have four kids. Um, they're two years apart each and sleep is always a big topic with moms. How do you get your kids to sleep? Do they sleep through the night? When did they start sleeping through the night? So I just wanna share a quick little bit about what I did with each of them because I did things a little bit different with all four of them and three out of the four have all slept through the night at pretty good ages and still do today, obviously. My fourth is a little bit of a work in progress, so we'll talk about her too. All right, so my firstborn, we had read the book Baby Wise, and don't just turn off the video, let me tell you what I think about the book. Um, there's a lot of controversy about this book, and if you've not heard about it, it's about sleep training and all this, and some people love it and swear by it, some people absolutely hate the book and think it's evil. So, I'm a little bit in the middle, okay? I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. I did find parts of it helpful and useful. Let me tell you what parts. Um, I really liked the sample schedule they gave. It was just a nice guideline for me as a first time mom to have an idea of what a newborn baby schedule should be like. So like they eat at this time, they play at this time, they sleep at this time. And that doesn't mean you are stuck on that schedule and you can't alter it all. It was just a good guideline. Um, like, okay, so this is a general idea of what we should be doing. And that's kind of what I did with him. We really focused on he ate, and then he was awake, and then he would sleep. And I followed the nap schedule. So like if at that age they said they should take three naps, he took three naps a day. When he reached the age where it said two naps, I found he kind of naturally dropped that third and we went down to two naps and he slept for the lengths of those. And I will say, I think he was a little weird. <laughs> it's like he read the book and followed it. I really did not have to do much. It was just like, he was like, oh, that what that's what the schedule says. Well, that's what I'm gonna do. He was perfect little baby and did everything there. But I will say after having my others, I do think keeping him on a good eating and nap schedule really helped his nighttime sleep. He started sleeping through the night at eight weeks old, which I thought was pretty amazing. Um, and yeah, it was just, you guys, it was really easy. It was really focusing on, I made sure he went, like he'd get up around seven and eat. And then I had, we had a little bit of playtime and you know, depending on their age, like when they're really little, playtime might just be like you sitting and holding them and rocking them and singing or reading or whatever. Um, because, you know, they're a newborn baby. And he might even have, when he was really little, dozed kind of in and out of that. And then at nine was a nap time. So I would lay him in his bed and let him go to sleep for a nap. And then he took another nap around, oh, sorry guys, it's been a while. I don't maybe it was like around one. I think he did, and it was like one to three. And then he took another shorter nap, like at, I think like four maybe like 4.30 to five or something. It was like a quick little like cat nap or something like that. Um, and then, you know, as his age went on, that kind of changed and altered. But as long as he got those good naps in and he, I stuck to a decent feeding schedule and he actually like ate like meals, like even when he was only nursing, like he nursed a good amount of time and it wasn't like cluster feeding and it wasn't like snacking. He slept really good at night. If we had days where it was more like a snacking or a cluster feed, those nights did not go as well. So I really think that having, trying to get them to eat at a good portion and taking naps really helps the nighttime sleep. Um, and like I said, for the most part, he just kind of went with it. Um, I know the big controversy with that book is the whole cry it out thing. All right, so here's what I'm going to say about cry it out. We let him cry a little bit. Um, and you have to know your child with the cry out. Actually, all of my kids, I've let cry a little bit here or there and everyone does. If you're in the restroom and your baby starts crying, there's nothing you can do. Like a lot of times you just have to let them cry for a minute, right? So that's kind of the way it is with sleep. When we would lay him in the bed and a lot of times he just went down. He didn't even whimper. He liked to go to bed, but the few times he did cry first, I thought, what kind of a cry is this? Does it sound like he needs something? Is he scared? Does he need, is he like upset? Or is it just, uh, 
he doesn't really want to do this or he's tired or just he doesn't know what he wants okay then i would sit there since he was my first with the monitor and a clock and i would watch and listen and i would time it how long was he crying and i'd let him cry for a minute and i let him cry for two minutes assuming that it wasn't like hysterical you know what i mean like obviously if something's wrong go in and get them like don't let them just sit there and scream their head off when they're like dying but um you know i could tell it was just like a uh, just a fussing cry you know like maybe like they do when they're in the car seat or something like i don't want to be in this car seat but it's like well i have to get from point a to point b so sorry you're just gonna have to cry for a minute um and then when four minutes came around i kind of reevaluated. okay i think i'm gonna go in and get him or no i'm not because usually by four minutes he was at that point where you could tell like his cry had been going down and down and down and more just like a, uh, uh, you know, or it was going up ah, and it's like, okay, this is escalating. He clearly isn't going to just go to sleep. So just evaluate what is going on and then do what you need. If you need to go in and pat their back for a minute, go in and pat their back for a minute. If you need to go in and pick them up and rock them for a minute, then go in and pick them up and rock for a minute but it is okay to let them cry for a minute. Um, like sometimes just think about their language. Crying is their language for everything. And so think about what they're thinking and then think about when they're older, they might just be going, I don't wanna take a nap, you know, like, or I don't wanna go to bed. And if they were an older kid, you'd be like, I don't care, go to bed. So just think about what type of cry is it and are they just kind of fussing and then kind of go to sleep or are they actually really upset? Um, Cause I don't think a child who's truly upset and needs you should be laying there and crying, but a child who's just kind of winding down and just, eh, that's fine. Um, anyway, so that's what we did with him. And like I said, usually he would just go right down and never even whimpered. Uh, he was happy to go to bed. Okay, then our daughter came along, second child. She was not him. She did not read the book and she wasn't interested in following the book. Um, she, I discovered, had acid reflux. Uh, we would lay her down. So our daughter, pretty much from day one, would scream all night. And unlike my son, I could tell this is not a I'm just tired, I'm going to fall asleep cry. This is something's she needs me cry. So I did not let her cry it out, you guys. I did not lay her in there and let her cry for five minutes because I could tell that it wasn't just a, I'm kind of restless, I'm falling asleep. It was like something's wrong. She needs me, she's hurt, she's scared. There's not, it's not a good cry. So, you know, know your child. So I would go in and I would rock her and hold her all night and hold her upright. And then, you know, she would cry even when I was holding her. So it was like, I don't know, but, so we finally figured out it was acid reflux, okay? So medication helped with that. I also found, you know, like sitting, sleeping more upright helped. I found rocking her helped. So like I would feed her at night and then, which I fed all of them, even my son, you know, the eat, wake, sleep, you do all day except for at night. And then at night you always feed them right before you put them down for bed because you know it's a longer stretch and they need that extra food usually they eat right before they go to bed like around when they're really little nine and then they would wake up and eat again around 11 and then they were asleep until like their morning feeding that was like around six um and then as they get a little bit older that bedtime would get pushed back to seven but um so anyway so i would feed her at night and then I would actually hold her upright and rock her for at least half an hour every night. And then I would lay her in bed and she would sleep. Um, <clears throat> and then once I started kind of doing that with her, she kind of fell into the same routine that my son had done and started sleeping through the night. So this shows you like how that schedule can be helpful, but you kind of have to tailor it to each child and figure out what's going on. Because um, I don't think that schedule baby wise recommends rocking them to sleep at all but that's what i did with her every night was rocked her for half an hour but it gave time for that food to like settle and her tummy settle and then she was able to sleep and didn't have reflux problems i also kept her bed more inclined so she was sleeping more upright um 
And then there were times I even had her sleeping in like the swing or a car seat, which I know they say not to do, but you guys, when your baby will only sleep like that, sometimes that's what you end up doing. And I didn't sleep as much because I was paranoid, so I kept checking her, but she slept. Now, today they actually have, and they, I don't think they had these when I had her, or maybe I just didn't know they had them, but they have like the rock and play, and they have other baby devices that are actually meant for them to sleep in, and they hold them upright. So if you have a baby like that, I would really look into that because it would just be a good peace of mind to know that they're gonna be safe sleeping upright in those, and you don't have to keep waking up and checking on them because you're paranoid. So, you know, invest in the baby products that you need. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of what we did with her. And she did not sleep through the night at eight weeks. I can't remember exactly. It was probably more like four or five months that she started sleeping through the night. Um, but there was also a lot more to play with her than just the reflex. We moved um, a couple times. <laughs> we were pretty mobile during her baby life and so you know that really throws off their schedule that throws off everyone's schedule so things were just a little bit more unsettled with her and so it was harder for her to um, kind of get into a good routine then we had our third and you guys he was an angel baby he actually started sleeping through the night in the hospital like the child did not ever wake up so much to the point that after about a I don't know, a few nights of that, not even a full week. I was like, this doesn't seem normal. And he was actually losing weight. So I started waking him up to feed him. Um, so he was a little bit of a reverse. See, again, this schedule did not work for him exactly the way they laid out. So I would wake him up to eat. And what I kind of did is I ended up putting him like on that schedule, even with night feedings. Um, myself because it's like he he was content just to lay there and sleep and do nothing he I mean he'd be like yeah I'll go eight hours without eating no problem and you know he was like two weeks old so I I just kind of was that's where I that schedule came in handy there I just followed it to I'm like okay he has to eat at this time and this time and this time and um and then I made sure he ate at nights and then I didn't let him go more than I think it was like six hours at night until he got a little older and then I let him go longer. Um, and then he kind of got in a habit of that. And so honestly, he would still wake up to eat around 11 and like maybe early morning, like around five, um, even when he was like almost a year old. But that's kind of because I had to put him on that schedule to make sure he ate. And I think, you know, after doing that for so long, it just kind of became habit. And since he was a little guy, I wasn't comfortable just letting him go without. So, um, you know, you have to judge it. Now, once he turned, oh, a little after one, I'd say probably around 14 months and we stopped nursing, he actually did start sleeping like 12 hours. So like he went from not sleeping a whole big chunk to he sleeps 12 hours, like seven o'clock at night until seven in the morning. So, you know, if you have a baby like that, that you're having to feed a lot, realize that it's not forever. Um, yeah, let, once he was a little bit over a one, we were done with that and he slept 12 hours. So that was great. And I didn't worry as much about naps for him because he was a really sleepy child anyway. And so he pretty much would sleep anytime. And I did lay him down for naps, but it wasn't as, no, you have to take a nap at these times. It was just kind of like whatever. And um, another thing with him is he also really didn't cry it out much. Um, yeah, you guys, I think he was pretty whatever. Now, I will say with my second, my daughter, and the cry it out. When she got older, okay, so after, you know, she kind of outgrown the reflux and she was older, maybe like around one to one and a half, we let her cry it out because she had kind of gotten in a habit of that too, of being rocked to sleep and you lay her down. And once she reached that age, she was like, hmm, I actually really like being rocked. So I think you can just rock me all night. And as much as I would love to rock her all night, you guys, like, mama's got to sleep too, right? So we had to kind of train her. Like, I would rock her still for her 
a lot of time because that's what I'd always done since she was little. So it seems mean to just be like, nope, not rocking you at all anymore. So I would rock her still and I'd lay her down and tell her good night because she was usually still awake um, and leave the room as quickly as I could. Actually, I'd like put her in the crib and run <laughs> because she, the moment you put her in the crib would just like, Wah! like full out, like I am dying, kind of a scream. In fact, if we had company, they were always come running. They're like, what's wrong with her? And I'm like, nothing. She just doesn't want to get in her crib. And that really is all it was, guys. Um, so again, this is knowing your child. I knew that that scream was just a, I don't want to be in my crib and I'm going to let you know about it. And I can give in to her. And I did a few times and I'd go in and I'd rock her and then I'd lay her down again. And honestly, guys, the times I did that, we did that all night long. Every single time I put her in the crib, she would scream bloody murder, even though it was still three, it was three o'clock in the morning. So I learned pretty quickly, this is not uh, her needing me. This is her not wanting to be in her bed. She just wants to be held all night. And that's just not practical. She's not going to sleep as well. I'm not going to sleep at all. And nobody's going to be happy the next morning. So I would rock her, put her in her bed and run. And then if she was still screaming in like five, six minutes, I would go in, I'd pat her back. Sometimes I would pick her up and rock her for a second or two if she was really upset. Um, the more you pick her up though, the more she would get upset. So I found it was better just to like pat her back, lay her back down, tell her good night again and leave the room again. Um, but usually after screaming like bloody murder, you guys, for five minutes, she would, you could watch her on the monitor. She would just stop, look around, get her little like lovey she would sleep with and lay down and go to sleep. She was like, fine. I guess if they're not going to do what I want, I'll just go to bed. And she's fine. The next morning she's happy. She's fine. She slept fine. So, you know, I don't feel like that was bad for her because like I said, the times I gave in to her, by three o'clock in the morning, I was super frustrated and angry and tired and she was screaming her head off still and nobody was happy. And I just think an angry mother and an upset child all night long is not a good picture. So it's better for everyone if everyone just sleeps where they're supposed to sleep when they're supposed to sleep. Um, and in a way, some people ask about co-sleeping and sometimes like I can't sleep if they're in the bed with me. That just doesn't really work very well. I keep waking up to check on them and wondering where they're at or I just, I don't sleep well. So I'm not a big fan of co-sleeping myself. Um, like I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just don't like it. Um, and at that time she actually did sleep in the room with us because where we were living, we only had the two bedrooms. So she was in with us and my son was in another bedroom. Um, and then for a little while we changed her in with him, but she kept him up. So we put her back in with us. But, um, so I mean, it's not like we were very far. We were in the room with her too, you guys. So, I mean, once she fell asleep, I usually let her go to sleep and then we'd go in and go to bed after she was asleep a little later, you know, cause she went to bed a couple hours before us, but it, we were right there. It's not like she was alone. Anyway, then we had our fourth and okay. So fourth baby, and I don't know if all moms have a lot of kids feel this way, but I know for me, I was just more tired in general because I have a lot I'm doing. I have four other or three other kids I was taking care of and a newborn baby. Um, and being my fourth and probably my last, you know, I was just kind of like, whatever. I would sit and hold her as much as I wanted. I would put her to bed when I went to bed because I wanted to sit and hold her. Cause especially, you know, with the other kids, I didn't always get to hold her quite as much in the day as maybe I would have liked. And I did wear her a lot, but she didn't seem to like to be worn as much as some of my others. So she was happier like being in the swing or something and watching what was going on. So, you know, if she's going to cry being worn, but happy in the swing, you're going to put her in the swing. But, um, anyway, so, you know, you're busy throughout the day. I felt like even if I was holding her, I wasn't focused on her. I was too busy taking care of the others. So at night I just like to sit in the rocking chair and hold her until I went to sleep. And when she cried in the night, I just went and got her. I didn't even bother with trying to like make her go back to sleep or soothe herself. Cause again, I was tired and it was just really quick and easy just to feed her real quick and put her right back down. And okay. But this is like what not to do <laughs> if you want a child who sleeps well. Um, and I don't really regret it. I'm fine with it. She's my last and it really doesn't bother me, but she is 20 months old now. And 
I don't know, probably three out of the, how many nights are in a week? Seven uh, nights. She gets up several times in the night still, and she's, you know, nearing two years old. And that's just because we've never really worked on a routine with her. We've never really taught her to soothe herself. And she has no nap schedule and no eating schedule, never has. It's like she naps wherever, whenever, and she kind of eats whenever, wherever. And part of that's being a fourth too. It's hard to follow a, a nap schedule when you're out all the time. You know, because I'd be taking the kids here, I'll take them there. And you know, I homeschool too, so it's not like I took them to school and then was done. But like, we're doing things. We went to co-op, which she goes to co-op with us. We go to swimming class. We go here, we go there. And it just happens to be during her nap time. So she can sleep in the car or not at all. Um, so I think that's kind of a downside when you have more kids is they're not going to fall into a good routine like that because you can't, you just, it's hard to do. Um, and that she doesn't always, I mean, she sleeps better and better the older she gets and I've been trying to work more on when she cries at night not just going in and getting her and putting her in bed with me because that's something I do too sometimes but then I don't sleep like I said because I don't sleep both of them in the bed she does and then um or just sitting in the rocking chair and rocking her for an hour and falling asleep in the rocking chair so I've been trying to be more like go in you know pat her back and be like it's okay just go back to sleep and then I go back to bed and and it seems she's slowly getting there, you guys. But the reason I even bring her into this is to show you that if you don't do any of the schedule, you just do whatever they want, whenever they want. I mean, unless you just have an amazing child who just likes to sleep, which honestly, my third probably would have been that way. We probably could have done whatever and he would have slept anyway. But um, it, it really does help. Keeping them on somewhat of a eating and sleeping and wake schedule kind of a thing it, it does help because out of my three, the one that I did not do any kind of thing with, she's the one that doesn't sleep. So, and again, if you're okay with that, it's your child. If you want to get up 20 times in the night, fine, get up 20 times in the night. Don't do something because you think someone else wants you to do it. Do what works for you and you're happy with and you're comfortable with. Um, I don't know. So, like I said, I've been getting up with her. Honestly, at this point in my life, I'm so used to getting up. It's like whatever. But... I have been working on it because it's just, it does get tiring sometimes, but yeah. So anyway, I hope that helps you. If you have any questions about um, how I do something that maybe I didn't mention or anything, please leave a comment below. I'd be love, I would love to answer it for you or help you out if I can. Um, and thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you all soon. Bye.